Uh, ascend. Ascend. Just freaking ascend. Howdy, hey. Hippio Tech here, and that's pretty embarrassing, and we'll talk about it more later. But that's not just what this video is about. This video is about a keyboard that has been the most requested keyboard I've ever seen. Yep, that's right. We're taking a look at the GMMK Pro. Now, please stop asking. This is a budget 75% keyboard, and we're going to be building it out with some corn scented keycaps. Wait, they're not scented? Oh, that's a bit lame. I'll also be comparing it with the Keychron Q1 and Idobao ID80 to see who wins the title of best budget 75%. But if you want to win the title of best fan in my heart, then you better hit that subscribe button because 73% of you haven't. Thank you. Anyways, let's get into the nitty gritty. I filmed this video during a stream. However, if you watch the stream, I still recommend watching the full video as I'll be giving a lot more thoughts than I did then. So Gloria sent me a care package that was basically anything from switches to keycaps to a mouse. And all of this was for free to try and get me to make reviews of them or whatever. But the most important part of this package was the GMMK Pro, of course. If you want to see me take a look at any other Glorious products, like their Glorious Holy Pandas or their mouse, then make sure you leave a comment down below. But anyways, getting into the keyboard, we just have to slice open this little box. For being a budget slash mid-range offering, the packaging was pretty good here. I'm excited from the cringy gamer branding. Ascend. Look, Glorious, I'm a gamer, but I just, I, I don't want to rep gaming like that, you know what I mean? Anyways, this board comes with some accessories, like these gasket strips that you can use to replace your gaskets on your board if they break. We'll talk about that later. And this USB-C cable. Now, unlike the Keychron Q1 that comes with a coiled cable, this one is just straight. That could be a pro or a con. For me, it's a pro. I think coiled cables are tacky. Also, throughout this whole video, you'll probably be seeing this desk mat, and you're probably wondering, oh, what's this desk mat? Is it any good? This is my desk mat, and it's available at kineticlabs.com via the link down in the description. Like, I had it commissioned and everything. It's selling out really, really fast, so if you want to get it, then make sure you act fast as well. Did I mention it's only $24 and in stock, meaning it's not a group buy? Anyways, that probably meant nothing to a lot of you, so let's just get back into the keyboard stuff. So, this is the GMMK Pro. There you, there you have it, we did it. This board comes in at $170 US dollars for the bare bones kit. It comes in a black slate or white ice color, but white ice is honestly just silver. And it also comes with an ANSI or ISO layout. If you don't know what ISO is, then that's good. ISO is kind of stinky. I'm sorry, ISO gang, that was a joke. Please don't kill me. It means they have a big enter key. Now this board sports a 75% layout with a separated arrow key cluster, which is amazing. And I like that a lot. Other things I like about this board is the construction is pretty solid and the aluminum chassis is got a really nice finish to it. It's got these little side slit doodly doos for RGB lighting. If you're an epic gamer, then you definitely care about things like that. And speaking of RGB lighting, there is per key RGB LED lighting that we'll talk about later. Now, if we look at this nice little butt shot of the keyboard, it's got glorious engraved in it. Uh, this is probably not my favorite part of the keyboard, but it exists. It's also got four rubber feet, and I really like this little lip on the side. It makes it a lot easier to move around on your desk. I'd say the overall construction of this, for the price, is quite good. You thought I was gonna say nice there in rhyme, right? It also Bruh. comes with a GOAT, aka greatest of all time, stabilizers, pre-installed. And I could just say, they are not the greatest of all time. At all. Ascend. Bruh. Ascend. Just freaking ascend. Now, okay, okay, disclaimer here. Glorious did tell me that they are incredibly aware of this issue and that they have fixed it for future batches. However, based on talking to some friends, it's apparent that a lot of keyboards went out with this issue. This is fixable and we'll get to that later, but I will say it's worth touching on. I imagine if you do buy one of these from the link down in the description, it won't have that issue, but it could. So keep that in mind. Now, speaking of things that frustrated me, the disassembly for this keyboard was pretty brutal. There's just so many screws, I had to take a break halfway through and just eat an egg sandwich. Like literally, I took a break, I ate an egg sandwich. It was great though, I love egg sandwiches. I love sourdough bread. If you guys ever wanna just give me a gift, give me sourdough bread or just join the channel. Okay, and then after my egg sandwich, I had the motivation to continue and I took off the top plate. This reveals the gaskets of the board, and I gotta be perfectly honest, this board has gaskets, but it's very similar to the Idabao ID80 Crystal, where they do basically nothing. Gaskets are supposed to make the typing feel of the board feel softer, and give it a little bit of squish and flex. In this case, I really just didn't notice any difference. Granted, in most cases I don't, but... Anyways, onto the plate. This is the aluminum, or aluminum version, and it also comes in brass or polycarbonate. 
Basically, if you want more clack, go for brass. If you want more thock, go for polycarbonate. But that doesn't always hold true, that's just my opinion. I would look at some sound tests and compare yourself. Now, this board does come pre-foamed, and this is a good sight to see. They use an ample amount of foam, and I don't feel like this case is hollow at all. Now, this case has gotten some hate, as people think it sounds too muted and just like foam. I think this is definitely a tinge silly, as foam is gonna sound like foam. But overall, I would rather have a case that sounds more muted than a case that sounds pingy. <clears throat> looking at you, Keychron. But you're probably wondering why I've been disassembling the keyboard this whole time. It's so I can try and fix these stabilizers. Now, I could have just swapped these out with different screw-in stabilizers or something, but no, 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 we're not doing that. Instead, I just wiped them off with a paper towel and then put a little bit of extra Krytox on them. The main issue with these is that they were way over lubed, so they wouldn't return normally. So I just had to fix that by wiping off lube. You could technically do that without taking them apart though. Thankfully, Glorious has a guide on how to fix this issue on their website, so if you are new to keyboards, you could do it relatively easily, but it's still kind of unacceptable. Speaking of unacceptable, the fact that I haven't built the keyboard yet and we're six minutes into a video. So now that we've got the stabilizers fixed, it's time to go for the switches. Now, I wanted to put Glorious to the test here, so I'm using their Glorious Link switches. These have been pre-lubed, and they charged quite a bit more over the non-lubed versions. Now, generally, it's kind of weird that they'd charge more for a lubed switch, as factory lube costs basically nothing. So, these Glorious Link switches are linear with a 60 gram bottom out, meaning they're like mid-tier heaviness. They come in packs of 36, which is very bizarre, but there you go. So for this, I needed three packs. Now, for three packs, that's 105 US dollars. So, I 100% cannot recommend these regardless of how good they are. With options like Gateron Hippos, or literally just any Duroc Linear, these just don't do it. I guess, let me give a quick brief overview of the lube job. Like, these still felt relatively scratchy, and honestly did not blow me away. Side by side with another factory switch, like a Duroc L1 Linear, and I'll have these linked down in the description, the Duroc Linear kind of just wins in my heart. So yeah, these switches are cool, but not worth the price at all. I'd say part of this is because you have to buy them in packs of 36, so it just ends up more expensive than any other switch would be in packs of 10. But then the ridiculous price increase for pre-lube switches, like, I don't know, Novel Key Silks, which are also pre-factory lubed, they're just better. Sorry, I didn't realize I could rant about switches for that long. Normally I just don't get into this type of stuff, but these got me a little bit riled up. I'm sorry, Glorious. I don't know, if Glorious can like show me how they cost that much more, then that's fine. Oh, wait, okay, we're moving on, we're moving on. To corn. Yeah, it's corn time, let's go. So this is Polycaps Corn from Kinetic Labs, and they are an affiliate of mine. They sent these keycaps out for a review, and here you have it. The art was done by Yura PSD, and these novelties are brilliantly cute. This keycap set is in stock, meaning there's no waiting, and it's only $80, which is pretty good. Speaking of good, if you're watching this video before October 7th, I'm doing a massive giveaway to celebrate the launch of my second single. Like, I'm giving away up to $1,000 in keyboards. Second single, what's that? Oh yeah, I make music, and I'm really proud of it, and you should definitely check it out. Kadeli Music. Where You Going is my first single. Click that link down below and go follow me on Spotify and just keep it on repeat, please. Thank you. Anyways, let's put these keycaps on the keyboard and get down to the business. Now, what's this business, you might ask? Are these keycaps good? Yeah, I mean, they're die sub PBT keycaps. They're $80, which isn't too expensive. They're in stock. Like, they're a pleasant build. I would say if you're building the GMMK Pro, they're definitely better than Glorious's keycaps, as Glorious's keycaps use some very weird font, and I wasn't a big fan of their font. But how is the GMMK Pro overall? That's probably what you're gonna be asking me. Well, if you're not already asking, Hippio, give me free keyboard, please. <sighs> I'm sorry, that's not what all of you sound like, but it is what some of you sound like. Well, this keyboard is reasonably priced and does have epic gamer time features, but it also has a lot of quirks that made it very frustrating to build and customize, and those stabilizers were pretty stinky. Now with RGB, ha, that's, that is cool. That RGB is pretty cool. I'm just a sucker for pretty lights though. But we have to compare this board to other boards. At its price point, I think it's a decent choice and you definitely wouldn't go wrong to buy it. But we haven't talked about the competitors yet. Ho ho ho, and we've got some competitors. Are you ready to keyboard? I will say Glorious probably offers the best customer support of any of these places. But we've got the Keychron Q1 that just came out. Now, I was pretty mean to this board overall, but that's mostly because I was using it to make a meme keyboard. I think the Keychron Q1 is also a fair contender, and if you look at keyboards video, uh, check them out for sure, 
He made this thing amazing. Now, I definitely didn't, but he made this thing really good. So I would say if you have a bit more of a budget, the Q1 is probably better. One important caveat to the Q1 is that the shipping is really expensive, and if you don't mod it, it really sucks. Whereas the GMMK Pro is better without any modifications done to it. So you have to kind of pick your battle and choose what you care about more on your keyboard. Overall goodness after investment or not. So I've been really bored of Idabao stuff lately, so I haven't checked them out in a while, but the Idabao ID80 still has a special place in my heart. Now, disclaimer, I've worked with Idabao a lot in the past, but the Idabao ID80 I still think is one of the best values if you just want a 75%. This is the cheapest offering of the three as a bare bones kit, and it does come with some poopy stabilizers. They now include case foam with it, which is pretty good, but I recommend getting the acrylic bottom for it if you are going to go with it as an option. I would say if you're budget sensitive, the Idabao ID80 is definitely not a bad choice, and it definitely sounds more unique than something like the GMMK Pro, but slightly more hollow. So I talked about three keyboards, and you're probably wondering which one I'm going to tell you to buy, because you're only really watching this video to figure that out, right? Okay, fair enough. And here's where I tell you, it's preference. There's no single right answer. The IWL ID80 is going to have a harsher bottom out. The Keychron Q1 is going to be the most gaskety, and the GMMK Pro is the mid-range winner. I would say the GMMK Pro out of this bunch is the least offensive, and if you like that, then there you go. Anyways, I'm gonna leave you with the sound test of it. Please watch the whole thing to support my YouTube algorithm overlords, or they won't let me eat. Thanks to Irie Kavik, Elusive Salvation, Nice Talker, the Mr. Man, Joseph Crane, Rosie Ray, and Aquarius Keyboards.